Welcome back, Storm fans. Brian Cook here on this lazy Sunday evening, and we are playing the namesake of this channel, The Epic Storm. In front of you is The Epic Storm version 13.5, and I don't know how long this version will stick around. It's sort of an middle list, I feel like, but we're going to try out some concepts today, see how we like those. So if you haven't been following the legacy metagame over the last two weeks, Mono White Initiative has sort of taken over. It's a prison deck. Some people like to call it Dungeon Stompy, for example. And that's what we're trying to beat. It's been absolutely devastating the online challenges. And well, it's a really bad matchup for us. Some may argue so bad that we shouldn't even try to fix it. That's how poorly it is. That said, I want to try something out today. And that is the card Dress Down from Modern Horizons 2. So it's a two mana enchantment, one in a blue, has flash. When it enters the battlefield, you get to draw a card. So it replaces itself pretty good there. Creatures lose all abilities at the beginning of your end step, sacrifice dress down. Okay. So why is this good? Why wouldn't we play Massacre against the mono white prison deck? Well, Massacre kills Thalia, which is pretty good. And that's the end of the list. So that's why we're not playing Massacre. They play Archon of Emeria as their secondary prison element against us. And I'm really worried about Archon of Emeria, which has a three booty. And that means that Dress Down will not kill it. So we're trying to avoid that. So, I mean, I might have misspoke there. Massacre will not kill Archon of Emeria. That's my point. But Dress Down seems like the card to try. But here's the thing about Dress Down. It also has secondary applications against Doomsday. So now we have three cards against Doomsday. Because if you play Dress Down in response to a Thassa's Oracle, well... They might not be having a good time. So now we have three cards against Doomsday. I know that Eternal Weekend is just around the corner and people might want to play this list. They might want to play 13.4. I don't know which one you should play. This is my first time playing 13.5 today, but just in case you're interested, there will be a cyborg guide posted to Patreon for this list. You can actually find that link in the card above. Join our Patreon, support us, get the cyborg guide. It's certainly worth it, I promise you. Uh, but one of the main things about this list is that you now have seven cards to board in in that matchup. So you can board out all four Veil of Summers, the three Galvanic Relays, and then you get Abrupt Decay's Chain of Vapors, Dress Downs, Crash, or Thoughtseize, whatever you want to do. But you have seven cards to board in, which I think will be a pretty huge improvement. And with Doomsday continuing to rise, I think that three Cyborg cards for that is also... Uh, an improvement there so we're going to see how that goes today if you have any thoughts questions suggestions put those down below but for now i want to hop on in and just play my favorite deck the epic storm in a legacy league so i hope you join me for the matches if you enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like comment and subscribe you can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel you get sweet perks such as badges emotes exclusive members only content and access to our members discord section as you increase the tiers there are other rewards such as shop discounts cyborg guides early access to videos and even free donation decks click the join button down below to find out more we also have other ways you can support us such as the epicsroom.com shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicstorm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to the first round. We are on the play. This seems like a great hand. I will keep her one art artifact away from Metalcraft and Metalcraft will give us enough mana to cast ad nauseum. I am in. The opponents kept seven cards. Let's battle. So we're going to play out the Volcanic Island so that way I can cast the Brainstorm. The question is, with initiative being so popular, and I know that a lot of people are playing it in leagues right now, and it looks like our opponent just hit the F6 button. I'm going to main phase this in case we hit another zero that I want to put onto the table. Instead, we hit the wrong zero. Um, I think I'm actually going to hide these, and I'll pass the turn. I guess I could have started on Brainstorm. For more information it looks like our opponent's playing elves kind of rough that my hand is really slow here i can't even cast ad nauseum next turn i'm two turns away i feel like this hand just gets outraced that's a glimpse of nature and i'm just going to hit the f6 key for now it's a hair druid not a guy's cradle they're passing played the badlands cast mox opal this is going to be a Galvanic Relay for two. And hopefully this gives me what I need next turn to cast the Ad Nauseum. But I could also just be dead. They have five in hand. Lion's Eye Diamond Bayou. So that would do it, assuming that I get to untap. 
They fetch with the Verdant. They get a Dryad Arbor. There's a reasonable chance here that I'm just dead. The Glimpse of Nature builds are more combo-y. They're not exactly what's in trend right now, but they certainly kill you a lot faster than the current Elves list. That's a Visionary. The Visionary resolves. They get a Elvish Visionary trigger. So they draw two off this. And they hit the Gaia's Cradle. Their Heritage trigger. Five in hand. Not looking good for the home team. Another Heritage Druid. So they can still add three green to their pool, so they have five mana to work with here. Now they have five Wirewood Symbiote. This allows them to pick up their Elvish Visionary and draw two more. Okay, so they untap the Llanowar Elves, and now they can replay the Visionary, which will also in return give them three green. So they get two draws and three green. Seven in hand. Nettle Sentinel, yep. What are the odds they have seven lands in hand? Let's go. They play another Wirewood Symbiote. So once again, this allows them to return the Visionary and draw two. And when you have a Nettle Sentinel, the Hair Destroyers become more effective because it's a third of, it's a green mana every spell you cast. Elsewhere, a Shepherd, you've got it. I'm just going to be lazy and hit the F6 key. If they've got it, they've got it. Okay, they're picking up. They actually left the Visionary in play, which is a little bit weird, and they picked up a Heritage Druid. Very strange. And they finally cast the Natural Order, and now they can attack for definitely lethal. And I've sort of thrown Game 1 in this matchup. Don't love that. Well, I shouldn't say that I've thrown it. The deck didn't perform. I, I just couldn't get to the Ad Nauseum that we kept a hand based on. We allowed our opponent to have a turn 3. Bummer. So one interesting thing is whether or not you're supposed to board and dress down for these post board games, because Elves is a deck that can play Force of Vigor, and I've certainly seen it out of them before. It's also very good at making sure you don't die, as well as stopping things like Collectors. But would you rather have Dress Down, or would you rather have Veil of Summer to protect you from Discard? It's an interesting question. So if we put all of the Veil Summers and all of the relays in the board, you can then board in Dress Down, and that leaves you with one slot. So you could board in one Veil of Summer. I'm going to try this out. I mean, if I lose to a Force of Vigor, it's obviously going to stink, but I like the idea of being able to blank their Natural Order turns or not losing to uh, Collector. Game number two, we're on the play. Don't think I'm allowed to keep this one. Way too slow. Like the same hand. Um, don't know if I'm supposed to keep this. All right, we're going to put a Burning Wish on the bottom. We're going to be asking our opponent for some help here. So we're going to cast this Burning Wish, and we're going to play out the rest of our hand and hope that they thought sees Burning Wish. Go grab the Echo of Aeons. Lotus Petal. Fisher's Bobble. Pass the turn. And their upkeep will look at their top card. Once upon a time, they play it. They find a Vernon Catacombs. They play the Catacombs. Come on, Thought sees me. Basic Forest, not ideal. Heritage Druid. Lion's Eye Diamond. That's what we want to draw here. We get a draw off Mishra's Bobble. Bright of Flame. The other Echo. Beautiful. Um, I think I just pass. You could cast the Rite of Flame here and hope that they then thought sees you on turn two. I don't know how I feel about that because the Rite of Flame could help us hard cast it. They play a Cradle, Bindhorn Elves, Nettle Sentinels. So now they can go up to four mana. The Nature, they're going for a turn two. Wirewood Symbio. I'm not even close to winning on turn three without a Miraculous Draw either. Looks like we're going to be losing to combo elves in round number one. Okay, they play another Heritage Druid. The triggers happen. They can go back up to four mana now. Another Heritage Druid. Wirewood Symbiote. They untap. Up to five. Heritage Druid. Got it. Looks like they're well on their way here. Five cards in hand, four floating mana. They have uh, plenty of elves. The Reclaimer, or Reclamation Sage, my bad. 
So they get to blow up my Lotus Petal here. There's no point in me sacrificing it. It really doesn't do anything for us. Up to four green. Elvish Visionary. This untaps the Nettle Sentinel. Two mana floating, and they get to draw two now. Planowar Elves. Looks like they're passing the turn, so I get a chance to rip a Lion's Eye Diamond here. Otherwise, I'm probably dead. Uh, that does it. Right of Flame. I mean, and by does it, I mean I get an opportunity to potentially win the game. Not very likely. It's an Echo with no mana floating. Go grab a Lion's Eye Diamond. We'll play out the Diamond. Discard our hand. Spin the wheel. Turn four. And they had a Mind Break Trap. Bummer. Okay, so that's the match. We are 0 and 1. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Let's try to bounce back in the second round. We're on the draw. I'm going to keep this hand. It's reasonable enough. We have access to turn one Galvanic Relay for a handful of cards. Also, I'm not going to be too bummed about losing that first match. Sometimes your deck draws below average. I could have gone to five in the second game. I feel like that's really the only meaningful decision I could have made in that match. And uh, sometimes you just lose. I had the impression our opponent had the mind break based on their pauses. But... uh I'm not going to dwell on that. Let's focus on this Urza Saga. Lotus Petal. Ooh, I actually miscounted. First time playing Magic. Please forgive me. All right, we'll play out the Bobble. Target them in case they're on a Narset deck. Oh, Karn the Great Creator. Lovely. Big fan. Yikes. We'll draw off the Bobble. Badlands. Saga goes to... They play Ancient Tomb and they're passing. We know that they have a Karn, so I need to do something here. Lion's Eye Diamond. No such luck. I can Burning Wish for Thoughtseize. Really the best choice that I have, I think. Grab the Thoughtseize. Cast it. This is where they reveal two copies of Karn the Great Creator. Karn Cyan of Urza and then Karn the Great Creator. Some sort of weird pox deck. Get rid of the Karn. Pass the turn. They make a Construct. And now they have to decide if they want to make another Construct or not. Okay, so they're not going to make a Construct. Needle enters the battlefield. I have to imagine that they name Wishclaw Talisman here. They do, in fact, name Wishclaw Talisman. They play Nurborg. Three mana for a Liliana of the Veil. They plus... I think we're supposed to discard the Veil of Summer here. Veil down. They get in for two with the Construct. We'll draw a card for turn. Another Burning Wish. What to do? I think we're supposed to grab Echo. And then they can't really plus their Liliana. Pass the Burning Wish. We'll grab Echo. Pass the turn. They plus the Lily. Wow. Okay. They do not give an F. Discard the Echo of Aeons. They still have City, Karn, and Profane Tutor in hand. I know all three. Map. Oh, they discarded the Profane last turn. Okay, so now they can get uh, Bajooka Bog and remove my Echo. Or Wasteland. Okay, so they're not playing a main deck Bajooka Bog. They remove the Underground Sea. Back for two. Draw a Wish Claw. I'm going to search out the Volcanic in case I need to Pulverize. Right of Flame. Play out the Lotus Petal. Spin the Wheel on Echo. Storm 3. Like, I don't mind a bunch of cards going to Exile, but this doesn't win the game, which could put me dead to something like Karn the Great Creator. But once again, I'm not going to dwell on things that I can't control. It's not a valuable exercise. So we'll remove 7, and then Galvanic Relay again. Only have two Burning Wishes left on our deck as well. That's worth noting. 
Okay, that's the turn. We have a whole bunch of cards in exile that I will look at next turn. No need to review them now. It doesn't do us any good. Liliana plus is... They discard a Profane Tutor. All right, they play Urza Saga into Karn the Great Creator. Not what we wanted to happen here. I haven't looked at the cards in exile yet, but how we win this game now is that we hit a Burning Wish and then enough rituals to create lethal off tendrils. They are at 14 life, so our storm count wouldn't need to be as high, but we need rituals and a Burning Wish in order to beat this Karn the Great Creator. They turn their needle into a creature and they attack for one. Okay, let's look at what's here. There's one Dark Ritual and a Burning Wish. So that does it, I believe. Land is mana number four. Dark Ritual brings us up to six. This is lethal. We're about to win through a Karn the Great Creator. Is anyone else nearly as excited as I am? Because I'm pretty thrilled. Uh, Karn the Great Creator is a trash card for trash people. And uh, this is what they get. This is what they get. Oh, not casting you. Hold on. Let's play the Misty. Tap it for a black. Dark Ritual. Tap this. We'll cast Burning Wish. Yes. Go grab the Tendrils. Play out Opals. Play another Opal. Beautiful. Eleven Drills. And I could have played out the Chrome Mox, but misclick Equity. I don't want to accidentally exile my Tendrils. Boom, take that, Karn. No one likes you. Chain of Vapor comes in. We probably want Abrupt Decay. Maybe not. I actually really liked Relay here. I think I'm just going to board down two Veils. We didn't even see much discard to begin with. I'm going to try this out. Game number two, we're on the draw. This is a fine hand, except for the fact that like our opponent's a deck that accelerates in the Karn of the Great Creator. I don't know if this is actually good enough. I'm going to take a mulligan. Uh, I'll keep, I guess. Bottom of the Volcanic. Hope that we somehow draw like a Burning Wish on the first turn. They play Basic Swamp. Pass. Okay. Ding! Ask and you shall receive. Lions at Diamond. Mox Opal. Fisher's Bobble. Play the Bayou, Dark Ritual, play Burning Wish, Storm 5. Yeah, so I could have emptied here, but against the black deck that might have something like Plague Engineer or Karn for Engineered Explosives, it's not really a play I want to make. So I'm going to grab the Echo, and we'll spin Echo, loading one blue, one black. Storm 6. The Dark Ritual, is this an Opposition Agent? It is! Okay. Not very nice, Storm 8. Uh, that's a bummer. We have to pass. Look at their top card in their upkeep. Another Dark Ritual. Didn't want to see that. Dark Ritual again. Let's see. They take my Dark Ritual. Not very kind. Ancient Tomb, Karn the Great Creator, and I have seen enough. Let's head over to game number three. All right. Um... Do we want a Brep Decay for opposing opposition agent? I think so. Or would Dress Down be better? Dress Down might actually be better. I'm going to try this out. It might be a little bit wonky, but it kills their Saga Constructs. It temporarily unlocks opposition agent and replaces itself. I think it, it's worth trying. Game number three, we're on the play. This just doesn't do enough. Mulligan. So you could bottom the Chrome Mox and just put it all on the line for a relay on turn one. Be a relay for five. I don't know how often your average five card hand is better, especially if they have a ley line of the void. So I'm going to try this. Put it mulligans to five. I called it ley line of the void. Okay. Bright of flame. Bobble. Lotus petal. Chrome Mox. No, I would not like to imprint. Relay for five. Upkeep will bobble. Thoughtsy. Okay. They play an Urborg. They have four in hand. One of which is a Thoughtsy. 
We'll draw off the bobble. It's a brainstorm. Draw for turn. How do we want to do this? I can't actually win the game this turn. Dark Ritual. Play the Wish Claw. Lotus Petal. Pass the turn. They have five in hand. Dark Ritual. Can have a Thought Seed. They take my Brainstorm. They still have two mana floating. X Mage. So your Dark Depths deck two. They nuke my Wish Claw. So they have two in hand. I have this Lonely Rite of Flame. We're not in a great spot here. Womp. Gothy Voidwalker. Or, there's the diamond I would have needed. Pass. Another Wish Claw would give me Ad Nauseam. Another Hex Mage. Take a draw step. Okay, so that means if we unlock, or if we draw a Peer into the Abyss, I'm, I can't even talk right now. If we draw a Burning Wish, I can Peer into the Abyss. They attack for five, I'll go to 12. Ad Nauseam. We can cast that. Right of Flame. Tap this for a block. Sacrifice this for a block. I'm going to hold priority. We'll sacrifice these diamonds for red black. Ad nauseum. Dress down. We're at six. We could die to our own Echo of Aeons here. I'll stop. Right of Flame. Dark Ritual. Lion's Eye Diamond. Hold control. We'll cast Burning Wish, make three block, and we'll peer. Could they make that cyborg expander any smaller? It'd be great if they could. It's not at all annoying or obnoxious. Target myself with peer. Okay. Play out the Mox Opal. Make a blue. Play another Opal. A Lotus Petal. Fisher's Bobble. Make another black. We'll play another Mox Opal. Burning Wish. Grab the Tendrils. Cast it. It's from 14. We got there. Take that, Karn the Great Creator deck. You got what you deserved, and we are now one and one. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Round number three, we're on the draw. We're actually facing a world champion, Ali Raid. You may know them better for their card, Sylvan Safekeeper. No clue what they're playing in Legacy in the year 2022, but we're going to keep this hand. It's diverse enough. We have Brainstorm to potentially put back these veils if we don't need them. I have to imagine that Ali is preparing for Eternal Weekend. Dried Arbor Pass. Okay. Another Brainstorm. I'm going to cast Brainstorm off this Mox Opal. If we had a fetch land, we can potentially shuffle some cards back. Or we can hit Burning Wish. This an empty hand. We'll put the two Brainstorms on top. Volcanic Island. Lion's Eye Diamond. Burning Wish. Make three blue. Make it look like we're maybe going for Echo or something, but we're secretly just emptying the Warren. Aya, 14 Gobbos. The Goblin Army is here. Basic Forest. Is this Elves? It is. We have Elves again. Okay. We'll draw our Brainstorm and swing in. Get in there. Ollie takes 14 down to 6 life and now needs to present Lethal. Burian Ranger, untaps the Dryad Arbor, picks up the forest. They can now replay the forest if they so choose. They do replay the forest. Three mana. Untaps the Dryad Arbor, mana number four. Natural Order. Greater Huff Behemoth. That is 16 damage. Not enough. Not enough. Okay. Game two. 
I think we want to get rid of the relays, as I mentioned. I think we might actually just board the same that we did in the first. Chain of Vapors, Dress Downs, Corrupt Decay, and we'll leave in one Veil. I don't actually know about the Dress Down plan, so this might not be correct. It's just something that I want to try out because I haven't actually played it against Elves. If it gets hit by a Force of Vigor, you're going to look like an idiot. Or if you get hit by a number of Thought Seeds, but it's worth trying in my opinion. Game 2, we've opened up a reasonable hand. We'll try it. Ali this time is kept seven, plays a basic force into metal sentinel. It's interesting that we face combo elves twice this league, mostly just because it's not your typical elves list anymore. Most people are on that mid-range deck with fiend artisan, and this is true combo elves. It's sort of refreshing to see it again. They have five in hand. Play out the bobble. Target myself, see if I want that top card. Another bobble. I'm going to pass on that. Go grab the underground seat. Pass the turn. Draw off the bobble. We have Burning Wish. That's a good one. Not playing out the Lion's Eye Diamond or Lotus Petal out of fear of Force of Vigor. Our opponent didn't play a turn one Thought Seize, so I think that tells us that they didn't have access to it. So why start playing around it on the second turn when they might have the other card? Virtual Ranger. So this can make a black mana. And with the Nettle Sentinel. They make 0.5 mana with every green spell now. Four cards remain in hand. Okay, so that was a very good card for them. They have four. Now pretty much every one mana spell they play is free. Yeah, that's a Heritage Druid. So now they're up to three green mana. We might be dead here. Depends on what their hand is, but it's not looking good for the home team. Three green. For another glimpse in nature, three cards in hand, back up to three green, virtual rangers, they draw two, five green, for a wirewood symbiote, yeah, I'm probably dead now, because now they could pick up a creature and draw two more, so they're not likely to fizzle when they have two glimpse in natures. You know, I could have played out the lotus petal, and then I would have had dress down available this turn, but I honestly just wasn't expecting to get goldfish like this. I guess it's my own fault. This could have been avoided. The Allosaurus Shepherd. Eight mana for another Allosaurus Shepherd. All right. I'm going to just pick this one. Bomber. We would have had a peer next turn. No, I'm one mana short of peer. No, I had enough for peer. All right. So that was potentially my own fault. It was definitely my own fault. No excuse. And we're off to game number three. On the play. Sure, I'll keep this. Bloodstained Mire, Mitchell Bobble. Target myself. Another Bloodstained Mire. I'm going to fetch that away. Grab Underground Sea. Draw off the Bobble. We hit right of flame. Once upon a time. They find a Heritage Druid, Wooded Foothill, Basic Forest, Sentinel. So now the question is, do I wait till my main phase to cast this, or do I do it on the end step? I want one extra look at potentially finding that action spell, so I'm going to hold off. Dress down. Brainstorm. Okay, uh, Ad Nauseam was a very good find. Put the Ad Nauseam on top. Lotus Petal. Opal. Diamond. I got another diamond. Right of Flame. Sacrifice for blue. We'll cast Brainstorm holding priority. Sacrifice for black. And blue. Brainstorm. Put these on top. Ad nauseum Storm 8. And it resolves. Yes. Okay. We're at 10 now. We go to 8. Seven. Keep flipping. We're at five. We'll stop there. Play out another copy of Mox Opal. Right of Flame. Lotus Petal. Lotus Petal. Tap this Mox Opal for a black. We'll play another one. Fisher's Bobble. Play out a Chrome Mox imprint. So it's going to seem like a showboat move, but I think you're actually supposed to Burning Wish for Thoughtseize to ensure that the coast is clear. So I have four mana floating. Yeah, I have enough. 
mean, it probably is clear, but why risk it? They had another explosive turn two hand. Wow. Cast the Burning Wish. Grab the Tendrils. We got Revenge on Elves. We are now two and one. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Round number three, we're on the play, and we are facing Panhan Go. The last time that I played them, they were actually on Rug Delver. They typically play Blue Red Delver. Let's see how this goes. Pretty powerful hand. I'm definitely interested in keeping this. It's a hand that would really reward us for finding a Galvanic Relay. Misty Rainforest, past that turn. Ancient Tomb, Chrome Mox. Uh-oh, I feel like we're being initiative here. Oh no. If I had realized this, we could have gone for a turn one. I actually can't beat Thalia. So let's see what would have happened. I probably would have brainstormed off the Lotus Petal, though. Damn. We just, like, we can't actually beat Athalia. It's not possible, so they just turn one me. Now we get to try out some of the cyborg plan, though. I guess that's a bonus. This is a nightmare matchup. So they're a deck that plays Archon of Emeria, Chalice of the Void, Thalia in the main deck. Okay, you, you like your prison pieces, whatever. But then in the cyborg, they play Deafening Silence, Null Rod, Mindbreak Trap, and I've even see, seen some lists playing Thorn of Vamnethist. They just. I don't think their deck is built correctly, if I'm being completely honest. I think it's kind of a poorly built deck. Like, the concept is good, but that's a lot of hate for a positive matchup. Like, I just don't feel like it's built correctly. You don't need that much to put combo decks in the dirt, or at least vary it a little bit. Like, all that stuff doesn't even deal with, like, Reanimator or Oops All spells that well. So it's just very odd to me. We'll board out the Veil of Summers, take out the Relays... And it's 60. See if we can manage to win a post board game. Um, I don't even know if this is supposed to be a keep. It doesn't actually do anything for what it's worth. I'm going to go to five. Better. Get rid of these. I think we're supposed to spin the wheel. The opponent's also on five cards. Bloodstained Mire. So a line that we could have taken was I could have put back both copies of Mishra's Bobble and then just imprint the Dark Ritual on turn one, play out the Wishclaw, Lines Our Diamond, and pass. It's, it was worth thinking about, I guess. But the problem is, like, if they just play anything on turn one, I don't get to do much. So I'm going to chance the Echo here. Play out the Bobble. Activate. We'll go grab Echo of Aeons. Spin the wheel. Uh, this does it. Okay, so turn one them is and hope that they don't have Mind Break Trap is the, the plan. Got it. I don't like these pauses. Hold control. Add three red. Yep. You got me. Congratulations. Round five coming up. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as seven tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final round, we are on the play. I'm not really sure what our opponent's playing. My fear with this hand is that I'm just so far away from actually casting the ad nauseum. I'll try it out. It might not be good enough. Okay, we're going to play out the Taiga so that way we can potentially protect ourselves with this Veil of Sum. In their upkeep, let's use the Mishra's Bobble. Lotus Petals, so some sort of combo deck. Underground C. Dark Ritual. Thoughtseize targeting themselves. Okay. I see. We do have a way of beating this. It's very difficult, but empty can beat Sarah's Emissary. They have two cards in hand, and it's Exhume Lotus Petal. And they name Sorcery. Earth sure Thing. Veil of Summer. We drew Dark Ritual. Come on, right of Flame, please. Draw for turn. Damn. 
What to do now? I think we just go get the empty. Pass the turn. I can attack for seven. We'll go to 13. Take a draw. So here's the thing. I can add nauseam, but we can't go below eight. So with five life, I need to hit enough storm and mana to play this empty. Pretty unlikely. Play out the bobble. Dark ritual. All right, let's just have a miracle add nauseam. From three. That's not a good start. Lions Eye Diamond, Wish Claw. All right, so we need running zeros here. And that means we cannot win. So we can pick it up. Bummer. Get rid of these Galvanic Relays. Definitely want Chain of Vapor. Likely want the Thought Seizes. Veil is still, like, relatively good because it stops uh, Chancellor of the Annex. I don't know if Dress Down's really what we're looking for. Would you rather have one dress down or the fourth veil of some? I think the fourth veil. I'm going to submit this. On the play for game number two. Way too slow. I don't know about this one. They kept seven. I think we have to mulligan. Like, this is just asking for too much. You'd have to hit a lead your... Actually, a wish claw does it too. Right, bottom of the volcanic. They reveal Chancellor of the Annex. Giant pain in the buns. They're just going straight to clean up. They discard the Chancellor. Take a draw step and we hit the diamond. Hell yeah. Fetch. Grab underground C. Fetch. We'll grab Iga. Play out the di diamond. The Chancellor triggers with that trigger on the stack. Has dark ritual and pay. Pay using a black. Diamond happens. Now we spin the wheel. What a good draw step. Ooh. Okay, we didn't hit a payoff. A little bit of a bummer. Pass the turn. And their upkeep will look at their top card. Thought C. So we're likely losing our chain of vapor. Included Delta. They grab a bad land. Thought Seize has been cast. We will likely be losing the chain. And now we have two draws to potentially win the game here. Let's see the first one. Veil of Summer into... Bomber. Mox Opal. Play out the Opal. Faithless Looting. Bristlebrand plus Chain. Lotus Petal. They still have a land drop as well. They play the basic Swamp. No reanimate spells. Okay. Could fetch the thin, but I want to keep this around for brainstorm. Let's get this mana source in play. It might help me beat a chancellor later. A okay, end step play in tune. Iona. Okay. They're using the polluted delta. Flashes back faithless loot. Cards two more creatures. They have three in hand. On deck, please. Bummer. Pass. Land number four, they still have three in hand. Really? What is in your hand if you're passing? We'll leave the Bayou in the deck because the Misty can grab that. Draw. Pass. Target myself with the Bobble. Wish Claws are top card. Enemy dead on Gristlebrand. That's not good for me. You return too late. They will likely be able to put multiple creatures onto the battlefield now. Opponent plays a Vernic Catacombs. Nine cards in hand, nine life. They enemy dead on Iona. Okay. They name blue. Interesting. That means they have to have a reanimation spell for Sarah's Emissary, right? Now they go to one and they name Sorcery. I think this beats me. Oddly enough, dress down would have been tremendous. So maybe you are supposed to board in a dress down. Damn. Oh, well, no, that's not true. I can't play the dress down because of the Iona. I don't think I can do anything meaningful here. Although those creatures fly, so even if I empty, they'll swing over for lethal. They got me. So this was a two and three league. Honestly, uh, not the best matchups for us. We faced elves twice. One of those matches, our deck quarter, sort of just like didn't function. Um, they were definitely below average draws. We faced a Karn Pox weird deck. 
uh, I don't know what to call that thing. Um, initiative Stompy Reanimator. Yeah, sort of a nightmare. I don't really know how I felt about the dress downs. Feel free to let me know what you think in the comment section. Uh, I would greatly appreciate that. Once again, if you're interested in playing this league, I will post a cyborg guide to the Patreon for this list. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it, so your input would definitely be appreciated. Thanks for watching. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.